What life tip do you wish you'd figured out sooner? Story 1. I've hit that age where it really starts to sink in that nothing really matters except the relationships you build and foster along the way. It's like a slap in the face thinking about how much time I wasted chasing stuff. Bullshit material goods instead of enjoying what I had in the moment. Story 2. Saving up and spending money wisely. Learn to invest and manage your savings. You never know when you will need money and pursuing a materialistic life is not as satisfying as many believe. Peas. Remember to treat yourself once in a while as the comments below say. It is miserable to live as Eugenie Grandet to just save money but not spend it to make yourself happy. Story 3. I know insurance and doctor availability can make this difficult. If you are not satisfied with what a doctor tells you, get a second opinion. I was having a weird lower abdominal pain that wouldn't go away. Turns out I have PCOS and we found a precancerous polyp in my colon at age 28. A daily supplement and colonoscopies every five years I can rest easier now. Story 4. I wish I had figured out that I don't have to spend all my time trying to make others happy when most of the time they aren't even going to be there for me when I need them to. I wish I had spent more time prioritizing myself over everything else. BC, now it feels like I don't even know what I like anymore. BC, I was always trying to please others and didn't even have time to take care of myself or my needs. Story 5. To just ignore people who believe the rest of us have been placed on this earth for their convenience and benefits solely dedicated to their interests and needs. I just don't pay anyone who lives by that philosophy any attention because they don't deserve my time and attention. Story 6. Sometimes the smartest thing you can say is I don't know. Sometimes the more people have tried bullshitting their way through things and making it worse than by just saying I don't know. Then either educate yourself or get out of the conversation. But admitting you don't know is not a crime. Won't open a hole in the time-space continuum. No one knows everything. Story 7. Not everyone is going to like you, and that's fine. People can find petty and illogical reasons to take a dislike to someone. They can simply not like your face. While it is good to reflect on your actions, don't take it personally if you don't gel with someone. There's a very good chance it's their problem, not yours. Just try to be decent to people. And if you don't get on with someone, don't worry about it. Story 8. Drinking buddies are not your real friends. They want you to be as miserable as them and fail. Learn to say no. If you're unhappy in your job, start looking for another. Nobody cares what you do. Don't try to impress people. It will make you anxious and miserable. If you suffer from anxiety, what would you tell a friend who had the same thoughts? Practice CBT daily. Get rid of all social media. Prioritize yourself over others. Cut users and toxic people out of your life. Eat healthy, fresh, high-fiber foods and two liters of water daily. Your mood, energy, and anxiety depression will thank you. Walk at least 30 minutes every day and on weekends get back to nature whether it's a hike, forest, beach. Read books and have three internet-free days a week. Internet-free days not mean Netflix or gaming, just browsing random shit across Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, news sites, forums, etc. If you're stuck in a rut, start planning your full week of things to do. If you're in a rut, you won't do this daily. Story 9. Honestly? Save early. Compound interest as you get older is crazy. So many things that were important at the time that I absolutely thought I asterisk needed asterisk are long forgotten regrets. Just save. Save whatever you can. The more and earlier the better. When you're in your mid-50s and have been saving for 30 years, you really start to realize the power of compound market interest. Story 10. Prioritize your health. I know it's cliche and seemingly obvious, but seriously. Eat better, exercise more, prioritize sleep, hydrate, Reduce stress, get some sun, and get yearly checkups. I didn't even think about my health because I was an invisible young adult. Then one day I wasn't healthy and have lost my health completely. It can be gone overnight. Do what you can now before you can't at all. Story 11, live to work is the dumbest shit ever. Also, finding a job you love is a pipe dream. The best you should ever hope for is something you don't hate. Work is to pay the bills and do the things you love outside of work. If you need to switch... Try to find something you don't hate that pays better. Chasing down some unicorn job that you will jump out of bed to do every morning simply doesn't happen for almost everyone. Once I figured this out, life got simpler. Story 12. Maybe not for everyone. Money used to be really tight and I used to get upset when my wife spent dollar on what I thought was frivolous. Like getting her nails done at a salon or buying another pair of athletic shoes when she had four pairs already. Of course, me getting upset turned into her getting upset, 
but I was struggling to keep all the bills and credit cards juggled so nothing was paid late. Finally figured our having an allowance for both of us worked. Started at equivalent of, say, around $1.30 slash week each in today's money. That allowance could be spent pretty much on anything. She used it for nails, etc. And when she would buy me a birthday present, it would be from her allowance and not my loan paycheck. She chose not to work. It has helped our relationship a lot. Of course, your mileage may vary. Story 13. Protect your mental and physical health above all else. You can choose your friends, but not your relatives. Your relatives are not always your friends. Do not loan money at arm's length. Trust no one. Do not overshare. Keep your private life private. Live below your means and save for the future. Story 14. If I could offer you only one tip for the future, sunscreen would be it. A long-term benefits of sunscreen have been proved by scientists, whereas the rest of my advice has no basis more reliable than my own meandering experience, I will dispense this advice now. Enjoy the power and beauty of your youth. Oh, never mind, you will not understand the power and beauty of your youth until they've faded. But trust me, in 20 years you'll look back at photos of yourself and recall in a way you can't grasp now how much possibility lay before you and how fabulous you really looked. You are not as fat as you imagine. Don't worry about the future. Or worry, but know that worrying is as effective as trying to solve an algebra equation by chewing bubblegum. The real troubles in your life are apt to be things that never crossed your worried mind. The kind that blindsides you at 4 p.m. on some idle Tuesday. Do one thing every day that scares you. Saying don't be reckless with other people's hearts. Don't put up with people who are reckless with yours floss. Don't waste your time on jealousy. Sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind. The race is long, and in the end, it's only with yourself. Remember compliments you receive? Forget the insults. If you succeed in doing this, tell me how. Keep your old love letters? Throw away your old bank statements? Stretch. Don't feel guilty if you don't know what you want to do with your life. The most interesting people I know didn't know at 22 what they wanted to do with their lives. Some of the most interesting 40-year-olds I know still don't. Get plenty of calcium. Be kind to your knees. You'll miss them when they're gone. Maybe you'll marry. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll have children. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll divorce at 40. Maybe you'll dance the funky chicken on your 75th wedding anniversary. Whatever you do, don't congratulate yourself too much or berate yourself either. Your choices are half chance. So are everybody else's. Enjoy your body. Use it every way you can. Don't be afraid of it or what other people think of it. It's the greatest instrument you'll ever own. Dance, even if you have nowhere to do it but your own living room. Read the directions, even if you don't follow them. Do not read beauty magazines. They will only make you feel ugly. Get to know your parents. You never know when they'll be gone for good. Be nice to your siblings. They're your best link to your past and the people most likely to stick with you in the future. Understand that friends come and go, but a precious few, who should hold on, work hard to bridge the gaps in geography and lifestyle. For as the older you get, the more you need the people you knew when you were young. Live in New York City once, but leave before it makes you hard. Live in Northern California once, but leave before it makes you soft. Travel. Accept certain inalienable truths. Prices will rise, politicians will philander, you too will get old. And when you do, you'll fantasize that when you were young, prices were reasonable, politicians were noble, and children respected their elders. Respect your elders. Don't expect anyone else to support you. Maybe you have a trust fund, maybe you'll have a wealthy spouse, but you never know when either one might run out. Don't mess too much with your hair, or by the time you're 40, it will look 85. Be careful whose advice you buy but be patient with those who supply it. Advice is a form of nostalgia. Dispensing, it is a way of fishing the past. From the disposal, wiping it off, painting over the ugly parts, and recycling it for more than it's worth. But trust me on the sunscreen. Story 15. Taking care of yourself. Eating right, exercising, haircuts often, skin care routine. It makes a difference in how you look, feel, how people treat you, and how much attention you get from the opposite sex. Also, the strength gained from my workouts helps me at work tremendously, and at home as well. I can sprint upstairs like nothing, and carry kegs up flights of stairs pretty easily. It was hard when I was out of shape. Also, a lot of people I know my age are dealing with a myriad of health problems, and I'm still young, only 33. Knee, lower back pain, diabetes, etc. My blood work is great, and I have very little pains in my body other. Story 16. Always try to do your future self a favor. Save that money, skip those sweets, go work out, plan your meals, etc. 
Of course, life can't all be Spartan. Just make sure treating yourself is on occasions and not a daily splurge. Self-control now for when it'll help your future self. I recently had my car totaled by a drunk driver. No injuries, but I had to buy a new car quickly. Luckily, I had been saving up for just such an emergency for 20 years. You never know what life will throw at you, so it's a good idea to be prepared by keeping your health, relationships, and finances in as good a shape as you can. For me, this is the life well lived. Story 17. The annoying thing is, I think I heard all the right advice when I was younger for the most part, but it took getting older before I actually learned it. Youth is wasted on the young is a frustratingly real concept. But I think the big thing is to just fucking live your life. Stop caring so much about what other people think. Stop doing things just for approval or acceptance. Stop shaming yourself out of trying new things or enjoying the things you enjoy. Have fun. Fuck around. Make the most of your time. Find things you enjoy and do the things. Have relationships that matter and stop wasting your time with the ones that don't, etc. All that shit is for real. Don't let cynicism eat away at your soul. Also, take care of your teeth. It's sometimes not enough to brush and floss and irrigate. You want to also make sure that you're doing all of these things effectively and with good technique. Story 18. Just turned 30 so I have thoughts lol. Use the toilet lid. Don't wear outside shoes inside. Wash your hands as soon as you get home before you eat and after the bathroom. If you catch a cold flu virus, drink Powerade Pedialyte instead of water and sleep as much as humanly possible. If it's bacterial, just take the damn medicine LOL. Find out your hair's porosity and then use products or ingredients that support it. Everything else is overconsumption. And knowing how to maintain healthy hair on your own actual body is a huge daily self-esteem boost. If you're able... Play a team sport, but definitely be on a team of some kind. The impact of socialization and physical conditioning of team activities when you're young cannot be overstated. I thought I had to be artsy and cool and do my own thing, but now I understand that was romanticized toxicity. Most of the successful artists and musicians I know today all played soccer or volleyball or did debate or mathletes or whatever. Socializing is an actual skill. And being on a team is the easiest and most useful way to learn how to form those bonds. Also, exercise is fucking crazy, lol. It's totally okay to just leave the party. The only way to get good at something is to be really bad at it in front of other people. So learn to be a good student. Try to be curious and humble instead of embarrassed and ashamed. Because I want to is reason enough. Pretty much everything is normal. Chilling the fuck out is actually almost always an option. This goes for anyone talking to you as well. Honestly, checking out our laundry has helped me so much and I wish I had known about it so much sooner. When it comes to new relationships, I now know that I can't develop trust with anyone until I see how they handle conflict. Don't start one though, lol. Going it alone isn't really a thing. We biologically need a real support system of other people, ideally multiple different systems. Solitude is important, but being chronically alone is one of the worst things you can do to yourself so push out of isolation as much as possible. Also, blaming other people for feelings of loneliness is in fact a form of isolation. So, if you feel that people at large are excluding you, trust yourself. But it's very likely that you are just in the wrong room. Go find the right rue. Story 19 Sometimes, the correct and best answer isn't the one you should go with. Especially online, I think people get obsessed with the idea of always making the most risk-averse, smartest decision and optimizing their life. I don't blame them, though. Everyone has different experiences and risk tolerances. What that means depends on the person and context, but I'll try to give some examples from my life. I bought a brand new motorcycle. Not only are motorcycles dangerous, but I took a low-interest loan for it. I was able to make the payments easy. I could have saved over the course of a year, but I knew I would just keep denying myself the purchase by putting my money into investment accounts or into my student loans. I felt bad because I grew up in a poor but debt is evil and save every penny family. Motorcycles weren't new to me, but I always had cheap junkers that I spent more time wrenching on than riding. I wanted to go on long multi-week trips, so I needed something reliable. I bought the motorcycle, quickly paid it off, and spent the next few years spending my vacation time on those long trips. I learned so much about myself I believe I grew as a person, and it let me see a lot of the U.S. that I wouldn't have otherwise. Unfortunately, I developed vertigo attacks and had to put down motorcycling for a long while. Don't worry, got treated. Turns out I had sleep apnea and lack of sleep was causing something called vestibular migraines. 
I still get them on occasion, but they are extremely rare and have learned how to sense that they are coming on. I started dating a girl at the end of college. She was going to graduate a couple years later than me. There wasn't a lot of jobs in the area and those that existed underpaid. We had only been dating maybe six months and everyone was telling me to move for better job opportunities, do long distance or just dump her. I fought to get a job in my field, underpaid and using outdated technology. I don't believe our relationship would have survived long distance that early. It has been almost 10 years and we got married, moved to a better job market together, and I'm making over double what I was before. I also made some of my closest friends at that underpaid job. We are currently preparing for our next stupid decision. We are preparing to move to Japan, whether it be for one year, five years, or forever. We are taking pay cuts to do so. We are ready to hate it or love it as we have only visited the country. We've seen all the stories about how horrible living in Japan is and spent countless hours researching every aspect of making the move. Summed up the pluses and minuses. Hell, I even went to therapy to make sure I wasn't trying to run away from myself or something because I felt crazy for wanting to make the move. It's been hard for me because I was that person that tried to optimize every aspect of my life, especially financial. But over the last five years or so, I've been trying to give in to my emotional side a bit more, and I've never been happier. Sometimes my decisions backfire and cause me pain, but I have never regretted them, and I've realized I'm happier going in with the mindset that it is okay to make bad decisions sometimes, as long as it's sustainable, aka don't max out your credits cards and spend your money on loot boxes no matter how happy it makes you.